All right, here we go. Let's get it started in here. Fired up. This is pre-calculus. So let's get this going here. Uh, probably thinking, what in the world does Twilight have to do with pre-calculus? It actually has everything to do uh, with pre-calculus. So let's take a look at it on the next slide here. What does this have to do with it? It's called Vang. So fill this in in your notes. Everything we do in math analysis is going to be Vang. What is Vang? It means verbally, algebraically, numerically, and graphically. So everything we do this whole year, we're going to look a lot of like Algebra 2 a little bit more in depth, get things ready for calculus here, uh, and looking at multiple representations. It's so important that it's the first section of pre-calculus, looking at things in different ways. How does the verbal relate to the algebraic, relate to the numeric, relate to the graphic? Why does that twilight? Well, when I think about uh, twilight, Vang is some, to me, I think of like Fang, but that would, you know, I'm trying to make this work with Vang. Then I think Vampire, Vampire Fang, Vang. I know it's kind of a stretch, uh, but I love Twilight. Uh, so here it is. I mean, if you think about it, you know, it's, don't get confused Vang with like Vampirely. Uh, I think she's humanly. This dude over here, I believe, is werewolfly. Wait, what's that in the back? What is that? Oh my goodness. Beanerly. I can't believe it. Beanerly. No, don't do that. Let's get that out of here. Uh, I can't get rid of it. All right, there it goes. So let's take a look at this. If I give you a verbal like this, Bob has three cakes. He bakes four cakes every two hours. The algebraic is just the equation. Can you turn that into an equation? Sure, Bob has three cakes. That's your y-intercept. That's your starting point. Plus, he bakes four cakes every two hours. So I'm just going to use x and y here. Uh, if you want to reduce that, you know, this would be 3 plus 2x. So no problem here. The algebraic is the equation. So algebraically is just looking at the equation. Uh, and then numerically, so you're going to say, put this in x. What does x stand for? I know this is x and this is y. That's not what it wants here. I want to know, what, what are you talking about? So really, I'm actually talking about uh, x is what? x is time. And then we should include the unit. What is the time? Is it hours, minutes, seconds, days? In this case, it is hours, so I'll put in parentheses. So this is the time in hours. And then what is the Y? We're talking about cakes. And since cakes is kind of weird, it's just a number. We're talking about the number of cakes produced. Excellent. So now I'm going to fill in the table. I put, gave you the X values. If you, at zero hours, how many cakes did you have? Sure, you had three cakes. That's what you started with. That's why it's your Y-intercept. After one hour, you have what? You have two more cakes, so you've got five. Two hours, you have four more cakes, seven, nine, eleven. So I want you to be able to go from a pattern to an equation to a verbal, or any one of these we're going to go all about. Then graph it. I think it's easiest to graph from the equation. Uh, you can graph it from these points. You know, If you want to say 0, 3 is your first point, 1, 5 is your second point, 2, 7 is your third point, or you know, I would graph from this, your y-intercept and your slope, up 2 over 1. However you do it. Graph the line and you're good to go. This is all we're really doing. This first thing is I'm going to give you any one of these and you got to be able to bounce around to the other. So if I give you the graph, can you give me the verbal? So we're going to play with this and then we're going to get harder functions um, besides just plain old linear. Pretty cool. Let's try the next one. Uh, you can pause it and try it or just work along with me if you want on this one because I threw something a little different at you. Do you remember what this is? This is function notation. And the reason function notation is cool, you know, really. I could have got away with just doing this, y equals pi x squared. It's the same thing. It works, and I can call this x and y down here. Why in the world do we have function notation? We have function notation because it really explains things, especially in context of a problem. We're talking about the area of a circle as a function of its radius. That's what that means. So as the radius changes in a circle, so does its area. So that instantly, I knew by reading that what this meant over here. Pretty cool. All right, so let's fill in the table. So what is uh, x in this case is r. So I know this is the radius. And how do we measure the, it could be any unit right here. Let's just pretend it's inches, uh, but it could be any unit we were talking about. If that's the radius, what is this one? This is the area of the circle. And what would that be in then? That would be an inches squared, or if you're talking units, that would be units squared. Very nice. So now I'm going to plug these different things in. So really, I'm going to plug negative two into this. So if, do you remember this notation? r is negative 2. The radius is negative 2. What comes out? Well, wherever there's an r over here, you've got to put in negative 2. So you get something like this. What does that give you? Well, negative 2 squared is 4. That's 4 pi. So really, this first one is 4 pi. Awesome. So that's function notation. Uh, if I put negative 1 in for r, what comes out? You get plain old pi, yeah, because you square it. 0, 0 times anything is 0. What happens if I put positive 1 in there? I get normal pi. If I put a 2 in there, 2 squared is 4. I get 4 pi. So if you didn't catch what this is, if you don't know, remember, 
uh, it's not too bad. You can plot the points. I know 0, 0. Boom, that's the origin. That's an easy one. And then what is this? Uh, negative 1 and 1 both make pi, so that's about 3.14. So about 1, 2, 3. There it is exactly. Boom, 3.14. And negative 3.14. just kind of have to approximate there. And then 2 makes 4 pi. What is that? That's like 12 something, isn't it? So at 2, I'm going up. There's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And there's some change on that. When you multiply, you can multiply by 3.14 if you want the exact decimal. And I know it's symmetric over on this side. So what shape is this? That's right. Remember this bad boy right here? It's a parabola, and a parabola is a quadratic because of that square. It makes this. So it doesn't have to be a linear function. It can be any function we want out there. It all ties together. This parabola makes these points. These are all points. These are all points on the function. The equation makes the graph, and it makes the table, and I can write a verbal for it. So that's what we're going to look at and do and really analyze uh, this whole time. Sweet. Let's get this. Keep it rolling then. All right. So I want to make sure we're good at function notation. Mr. Bean's going to uh, talk to you about this later on. And uh, we've actually done this in the past. But I just want to make sure it's good to go so there's no confusion because we're going to use it a lot. We're really switching over to this mode because it really helps us out uh, with applications and whatnot. So what does this really mean, the f of negative 3? It means whatever your function is, so 9 minus 4x, you're going to replace any x in there with what? Whatever's in the parentheses. I don't care what's in that parentheses, it goes in for every single x. So we're looking at what, 21? So we can say the f of negative 3 equals 21. Awesome. Let's keep it flowing then. What if I say the f of x is 10? Well now I'm saying the f of x is 10, so I'm saying the f of x is 10. What am I looking for? I'm looking for when, solve for x. So what x makes this y? It's just another way of saying what x makes this y. Uh, if you subtract 9 from both sides, divide by 4, it would negative 1 fourth. So x would be negative 1 fourth. So I can say the f of negative 1 fourth actually equals, uh, in this case, what? 10. Pretty cool, huh? That's a terrible looking 10. I can't leave that there. All right. Moving on to this, it's going to get a little bit different, but nothing we can't handle. If I say the f of h, it doesn't matter. Again, remember, whatever is in the parentheses, you put replace x with that. So in this case, that's what the f of h equals. It equals 9 minus 4h. I mean, it could be the f of a smiley face for all I care. What's the f of a smiley face? Well, it's 4 minus a smiley face. It doesn't matter. Whatever's in there, put it in for every single h. Probably not going to run across too many smiley faces uh, this year. Well, I mean, besides just you're happy to be in class and whatnot. Uh, so what about the f of x plus 2? Well, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to say it's 9 minus wherever there's an x, replace it with x plus 2. And then just distribute that out. If you distribute the 4, you get negative 4x minus 8. Combine like terms here, you've got a negative 4x plus 1. So the f of x plus 2, if you want to write this out so you can see it, the f of x plus 2 equals negative 4x plus 1. Boom, there it is. So don't freak out. We can put anything we want in there. Function notation. Mr. Bean will talk about this later, but it'll probably be boring and you'll probably sleep through it. So I thought, you know, I'll give you a little warm up now so you, you know you know what's going on then. Speaking of Mr. Bean, here we go. Mr. Bean loves Pokemon. For all I didn't know if you knew that. Let's do some calculator. I, this whole uh, first unit, I'm going to give you calculator skills that I want you to be able to use for the year. So I want you to be good at the calculator. So here's the problem. Uh, Mr. Bean enters this Pokemon competition, and we're going to count his cards over time. So again, what does this all mean? You know, I've got the C of T. This is going to be his cards over time. The number of cards is a function as time. So as time changes, his cards will go up and down. So let's graph that. So Let's say you didn't know how to get there. How do I graph this thing? Well, pull your calculator up. You go to the y equals. And under the y equals, you can put in like eight different equations. I already preloaded this thing, and I just typed it right in. One third x cubed. Now, you can't use t and c and all that. It's always x and y, but we'll know what they mean. Plug that in your calculator. So pause it. Make sure you get that in your calculator. Now, let's go ahead and graph it. I want to look at a friendly graph. So this is the hardest part of this. If I just hit graph to graph it, wow, is this very friendly? No, it's not friendly. It doesn't make sense with what we're talking about, and it's just a straight line. It's right. This is 100% right. This is a cubic function. We just aren't looking at a good spot. So how, what do I have to do here? I need to go to my window. So right here is the basic window. If you go to zoom standard, zoom 6, this is the standard window. What is this? It goes 10 in every direction. 10 in this direction, 10 up, 10 left, 10 down, 10 right. 10 in every single direction. So I need to change that so it makes sense. Uh, some people will like to try to do this little trick here. They can do the zoom fit, the zero. Zoom fit I'm not a big fan of. But some people are like, oh, I'll just zoom fit it. There's a, there's a pretty window. 
Uh, I mean, maybe it's better. I'll buy that. It's a little bit better, but is it friendly? No, it's not friendly because it's got all this stuff we don't need. Like, yes, I can see this is a function better. It's better than that line, I'll give you that. But I don't like Zoom Fit. Stay away from Zoom Fit. Um, so let's go back and change our window to... Oops, where am I at? Window, window. Okay, let's change the window so it makes sense. What does X stand for in this problem? X stands for what? T. So X in this case is really what? It's time. And how is it being measured? Well, it's being measured in days. So we're looking at his seven-day competition. So what's the minimum amount of days? It would be zero. And in word problems, I mean, a lot of times you're going to start at zero as a minimum. Great starting point. If you don't know, just put zero. Seven-day competition. If you want to go farther, you can, but it's seven-day competition. This right here, this X, that means X scale. That is what you want to count by. Seven days, I'm going to count by one. So that's pretty cool. That works out. How about Y? What does Y stand for? I don't want to highlight. What is that? Okay, there we go. Y stands for what? It's his total cards. So this is the total number of cards that Mr. Bean has over time. So this is the one I don't really know. I can look for the function for, to help me kind of guess some ideas, but this is where it comes a little guess and check. Probably the minimum amount of cards you can possibly have is zero, unless he owes his friend some cards if he runs in the negative. What's the max? I have no idea. I don't really play much Pokemon. Uh, maybe it's 100, maybe it's 50. We can just guess. I'm guessing I see a 50 here. That's a good sign that maybe it's more. So I'm going to guess 100. Maybe he gets way more than that. What do I want to count by? What's my Y split? My Y split is I don't want to count by ones, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. That would take forever. That would be a bummer. I'm going to count by tens, 10, 20, 30. And don't mess with this. This is the resolution. We always leave it at 1. Don't even touch it. Now let's graph it. Check this out. This is a friendly window. This is great because I'm only looking at the domain I need from 0 to 7. Boom. I don't need a day 8, day 9. I, who cares what happened? The tournament's over. Uh, I maybe have a little extra Y here, but that's okay. You know, if I want to trim down, he's not going to get to 100 cards like I guessed. If you want to trim that down, trim it down. You know, I don't know. Maybe he's only going to get to 70. But it was pretty good the way I would. I was cool with the way it was. So I trimmed that down to 70. So there we go. That's pretty cool. Should we take? I'll keep that window over here in case you want it. Oh, that's fancy. All right. So we've got this graph. Why do I need this graph? Well, it's really super cool. Let's take the first one. What does the C of three mean? And find it. So. I could have done that. I could go up here and wherever there's a T, I could put a 3 in, no problem. Put a 3 in all those, crunch it out, and you're good to go. But once it's in the calculator, I don't need to do that. If you want to, you're more than welcome to. But check this out. Hit trace. When you hit trace, it gives you the coordinates of the point of your little cursor right here. Just hit 3. Trace 3. Boom. And enter. It puts you right at that spot. 3, 35. That's the point I'm at. So I'm at the point 335. So it wants to tell me what it means. This means what? This means on day three so at this moment of time bean has what what do we say 35 total cards it means the point three comma 35 is that cool i love it i love the calculator what a big help that is three thir you know pull that one over too might as well load them up get some pictures in there looks nice ah uh, excellent so what does the ct equals 40 mean Ooh, that's a little bit different so now i'm saying okay this means what? At what time? I don't know. At what time or on what day does Bean what? Does Bean have 40 cards? I want to know when will Bean have 40 cards. So let's go back to our graph and take a look. What you can also do with traces is just move left or right. I want to say, oh yeah, it looks like he has 40 cards up here. Now later on I'll show you how to find this exactly, but just for this section I want approximate. That's a good approximation. I can't get exactly 40 because of the pixels. It bounces between the pixels. But this is a pretty good approximation. Let's take it. Might as well put the screen over here. Gonna <laughs> love it. Awesome. So when is he going to have it? I'm going to estimate that's what? About day two point, and I usually like three decimals here, eight five to the thousands. So uh, 2.085 days. So somewhere just after the start of the second day, he's going to have that many cards. Is that the only spot? No, no, it's going to be out here too. So if I come over here, following that bad boy along, boom, 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 boom. Is he going to get 40 again? He's coming back up. So he starts off lo losing cards, bombs out, and then he starts gaining cards again. How close can I get? Who's close? I think this guy's closer. So it looks like day 6.18. So 6.181 if we round that. So 6.181. So after 6.181 days, he's back to 40. So he actually went down, and then he came back up. Cool. And again, we can find that later on exactly, but for now, I just want to use that trace button, practice tracing. What does the y-intercept mean? 
Well, the y-intercept means what? The c of 0 times 0. And if it's at 0, what does that mean? It means, we'll plug 0 in all these, or what does that mean? It's 50, isn't it 50? It means what he started with. At time 0, he starts with 50 cards. My handwriting is amazing. 50 cards. Wow. I hope you can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> if you're trying to read it, it's a little rough. But he starts with 50 cards. And maybe you could recognize that that's what that 50 was up there. If you didn't know that, could you trace 0? Just hit trace 0, and it puts you straight there. Boom. 0 is 50. Why are huge? What's the lowest amount of cards? Let's take a guess. I'm going to guess it. It looks like it's over, what, around that 765. So I'm going to guess 4.4. Totally just guessing. Hey, that's a pretty good guess. 4.4. 30.8, does it get any lower than 30.8? One spot lower. 30.86, so according to the trace, and again, we can find this exactly later, but I just wanna practice tracing around the place. Um, when I do that, I'm gonna get 30, let's just go ahead and screen crap show this last one. Might as well, now we're loaded. That looks like about the minimum, so if I have the minimum, um, that's gonna give me what? It looks like his, let's go back to this problem. So, I forgot about the whole idea of the table feature. If you come over here to above graph in blue, it says table. If you come here, check this out. This is numeric. Remember that? This is definitely going to go on our screen. That's numeric. This is numerically looking at. So, I got algebraic, numeric. I got the verbal, verbal, algebraically, numerically, and graphically. That's amazing. There's my vang right there. I got my vang on. Uh, so, it, I can scroll down and see any day I want. Day one, two, three, four, five, six. So, uh, but I can't, go, I don't need anything past seven, but you could. This will actually, if you scroll to negatives. Let's pretend this was a year-long tournament. Mr. Bean uh, decides to get out of teaching year-long, and I want to go to the uh, 201st day. Oh my gosh, this is boring. That's a long way away. So what do I do? Check this out. If you go over here to window, above window, it says table set. That's table set. Uh, so it looks something like this. Usually that says zero. So when you go here, this is, you can set your table. Let's say if I wanted to, I could start my table at 200. Start it anywhere you want. Now when you go back there, boom, I jump. So this is actually day one. Ooh, we'll talk about this later on what this means. There's no E in that. If, this shows you the full number down here. That's scientific notation. That's how many cards he would have if this function held true on day 201. So that's pretty cool about table set. What else can table set do? This little delta here is change in, change in the table. Maybe you don't want to count by ones. Maybe you want to count by tens. Check this out. 200, 210, 220, 230, 240. That's pretty cool. Maybe you want some decimals. I don't know. Maybe you want to see exactly half days. Count by 0.5s. Day and a half. 200th day, 200 and a half day. Something like that. All kinds of options here. Here's my favorite though. This is where it's at. This is the independent variable and you have auto and ask. If you change this, the independent variable is the X one. If I change it to ask, now go back. Oh my goodness. I want to know the 201st day. Boom, there it is, got it for me. I want to know the 47th day, nice. I want to know the 26.874927586 day. Maybe you want, I don't know why, maybe you want to know that. Hit enter, there it is. I can get it down to any part of the day you want to exactly how many cards Mr. Bean has. Isn't that sweet? I love it. You can even do negatives if you want. Not that it makes sense in this problem. He owes a lot of cards right there. Uh, you're good to go. Pretty sweet, just one word of the wise, don't change the dependent variable, it messes things up, it doesn't work, I'm not even sure it's why it's in there. Um, it's not gonna, you can't ask the y value. So uh, uh, don't even try, don't even mess with it. So, we got this from last time, uh, what do we know? I just told you this, don't ever mess with the dependent variable, what are all these other arrows here? Just want you to jot them down, uh, fill them in what each one of these does, write something for them uh, down there so we know exactly what they do. Excellent. All right, uh, I pause this one, try the entire problem all by yourself, and then I'm going to post the answer and see how you do. Good luck. I go through this together. Uh, take a look. I put the equation in here. Let me show you a common mistake. This is the right equation. This is right. This will graph no problem. Sometimes people kind of use this subtraction sign in hit graph, and it says there's an error. Oh my gosh, a syntax error. If you go to that error to see what it is, it doesn't tell you what it is, but it puts a cursor right there. You can't use that. Don't use that for negative. You've got to use a negative button down here. Uh, hopefully that didn't happen to you. So I definitely did my zoom standard. I got this, again, not a friendly window. Hardest part of all this is just finding it. Once you get the window, you're good to go. So what did I think about? Well, I gotta think about what X and Y stand for. Did you think about X? Well, T is time in this case. And uh, this is Mr. Brust. I didn't even read it out loud for you, but this is Mr. Brust gambling uh, measured in hours. So hopefully I do pretty well here. So B, I guess is for Brust. 
T is time, and it's some kind of amount of money here. So again, um, how long does it say I was gambled? Continuously for that time period, a one day layover. So this is hourly, so what do we want to count by? We want to count by 24, 24 hours in a day. Count by ones, twos, whatever you want. You're good to go. Hopefully I don't run into negative, so I'm gonna be uh, positive about that. I see the number 180 here, is, that's gonna be the y-intercept, so I don't know, I'll go to 200 as a reference, just as a starting point, and I will count by 50s. Let's check this out, see if that's any better. Yes, that's good for me, right? Oh, that's bad for me, bummer. Um, let's go back to the window. I'm, I don't have enough Y here, you see that? It went up and didn't come off, so I'm going to my Y max. At some point, I made more than, two, more than $200. Let's go to $400 and see how that looks. Graph it, much better. Ah, man, I was on a roll too. So what does this mean about my money? I was making money, making money, shoulda went home. Bad things happen. So let's take a look at this. Great for word problems. I'm gonna end you with a couple Twilight clips, some of my favorite highlights. Highlights of Twilight. Uh, good luck on the practice and the applications and on the master check. Peace out. What'd you have for dinner? Leftover piece of cake. Cake? Wow. As a get I don't like your face. Hmm. You got horrible zoo hands. And you have the record for frowning. I want some lettuce. You ever just want to have a centipede, you know, in your pocket just in case you wanted to eat it? Why would I do that? Like, that's just... Because you'd like it? Uh, that's really weird. Suntan, that's what you need. He's right. I want to address my wart, the one on my knee. You see, I want to just shear it off and then keep it. Maybe tuck it in a tray or a decorative box. And no one could find it. It'd be a secret. Hidden away like my frisbee. And my Grover mask. And my Grover mask. And my Grover mask. What do you need? Can you find me a drummer? No, but I can find a loser. Come on, I'm a star. Well, then where is your gold suit? Uh, it got, like, hair on it from this Rasta guy on the bus. I mean, I'd probably look totally incredible in it, but it was really just, uh, making me sick, man. But I brought you something. It's the tissue I just used to blow my nose. And it's still wet. Mm-hmm. Dragons are great in several ways. They guard the magic cloak. And I will find this cloak, then I will hide. Out in the street, in plain sight. Then I'll go find you a new fishy. Da, 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 da. I don't know this song. I'm not feeling it. But it's got this. That thing's stupid. Oh. It's not my fault. So what the heck, No, 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 no don't use that tone. Oh, he's such a sweet. Oh, oh, oh I'm the tell everyone that y'all never at SeaWorld. Yeah, that's right. You guys. Because I was doing crunches. Uh, Teen Wolf, let's start. Just chill. Choo, choo, choo. He's a meanie. He just hurt my feelings. Also, he hurt my skin. And, 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 he, and he gets poor grades. Uh, I promised I wouldn't do this, and who cares? I need to say my alphabet, and I can never trust skeletons. Hmm, don't you wanna set me down? I just want my lily pad. <laughs> hot potato. Yeah, one time I bit a geese. My left shoe leaked sock grease. That's gross. Ate a big leech. Ooh, how'd you keep it down? Hot potato. The Tin Man sat in the soup. Of course he did. You just wrecked the beat. Ow! Do you have a glue stick? What? Jeez, I need some glue. Do you not use it when you break stuff? Not really. Nice. <laughs>